This is a discussion using the spinal column cross-sectional model that will explore the functions of some of the basic parts of the spinal column. We will start our discussion by looking at the white columns in the spinal column and discussing their functions. The dorsal white column is made of primarily sensory inputs. These are uh, ascending fibers. They're coming from sensory receptors that are very finely tuned to very, very specific areas. The lateral columns receive sensory inputs from a wide variety of sensory receptors. They deal with a lot of different sensations. Most of the fibers transmit pain, temperature, coarse touch impulses or sensations that we're aware of, but we have difficulty localizing precisely on the body surface. The ventral columns of the white matter carry motor outputs or descending fibers. Now these little areas along the edges, the dorsal and ventral spinocerebellar tracts on either side, dorsal and ventral, convey information about muscle or tendon stretch to the cerebellum. The cerebellum uses this information to coordinate skeletal muscle activity. Next I would like to discuss the function of the various horns of the gray matter. This general region of the dorsal horn of the gray matter is made up primarily of somatic sensory neurons while this region deals with visceral sensory neurons. This region on the lateral horn of the gray matter deals with visceral motor neurons which are primarily autonomic meaning that these handle things that you don't actively think about. This last region, the ventral horn of the gray matter, deals primarily of motor neurons or somatic motor neurons dealing with skeletal muscle. The last thing I want to talk about are these spinal nerves which split into sensory and motor fibers. The sensory neurons go through here. These are sensory fibers and a ganglion is a group of the cell bodies for these sensory neurons. So these are bringing information to the central nervous system. And this ventral root are primarily motor fibers. So these are taking information out and telling either visceral muscles or skeletal muscles to do something. This wraps up my discussion of the basic functions of the parts of a cross-section of a spinal column.